the first was I, I was the first point I was making was this would go against the uh, national food policy that right. we formed in the 1960s. Right. Uh, there are two, three additional problems with this, which are also important. Right. Uh, and I think a lot of people have pointed this out, uh, and these are not uh, no way original points. Uh, first is the uh, point that money is fungible. Mm -hmm. And for poor households, a cash transfer is by no means a security that, that we transform into a food or calorie intake. Right, right, right. That's the second problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the third problem is the question of inflation okay. and thus a fall of real incomes. Right. Uh, it's an old conclusion in the literature that when cash transfers are made, the purchasing power of people would simply go up and it, it will raise prices. Okay, And if you look at uh, the, if, if, if it's the BPL population that is provided with the cash transfer, uh, and if you look at an increase in purchasing power of, of, of that part of the population, mm -hmm. it will lead to an overall increase in uh, food prices in the market. Right. Okay, right. And the people who are not receiving cash transfer, that is a non-BPL population, uh, would suffer a fall in real incomes as a result. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, given that the APL-BPL division in India is an extremely problematic division and many people in the APL uh, group are actually uh, poor if you look at other indicators. Uh, this is a highly regressive outcome that you can have. Now, even if you assume that there is no APL-BPL division and you are, you are actually giving cash transfers to all, okay, and thus purchasing power goes up on an average in the population, okay, you would see that it would still raise prices. And, and the initial gains mm -hmm. can get eroded by later prices, mm -hmm. uh, later increase in uh, prices of commodities. Right. Okay, uh, and, and and here again you will face the problem of real income falls uh, right. uh, for most of the population. Right. The final point, the final point is right. that, uh, and 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 this is a very important problem that it will have because uh, cash transfer uh -huh. uh, is not a self-selecting. Uh, well, uh, self-selecting uh, social yes, security yes. Uh, yes. measure. Yes. Uh, in the sense, uh, self-selection means uh, people who do not want uh, that uh, that particular uh, provision can actually back out and, and, and sort of sort of self-select them out of the system. Yes. A typical case would be as uh, an employment guarantee program, uh, which yes. involves manual labor, yes. where people who do not want that employment exactly. and who are not ready to do that do that employment, that kind of manual labor, will not come and offer themselves for work. Yeah. Yeah. Only those who would need it would come and report for work. As a result, uh, it will, uh, they, uh, uh, as a result, the error of inclusion, as they call, as they talk about it, will be handled uh, sufficiently well. Yeah. Uh, having said that, do you see a role at all for this, uh, this uh, program itself or direct trans cash transfer in any sense, in any welfare measure? The people who tout this program say that uh, I mean, you should one should look at the example of success of cash transfers in Latin America, uh, and probably that could be a model that could be adopted in India. So, are there any specific uh, areas where this model can work? Uh, not notwithstanding the fact that, as you mentioned, that uh, it is not an effective substitute to say the PDS or uh, fertilizer subsidy programs uh, in in themselves. Certainly, it has. If you look at the history of cash transfers, direct cash transfers, conditional or un uh, unconditional, mm -hmm. uh, it has been used for a very long time in the case of emergencies, for example, okay. Okay. Uh, food emergencies, famines, okay. drought situations. Right. Huh? For a large number of situations like this, okay. uh, direct cash transfer has played a very important role. Right. And, in, and given the extremely backward conditions of life uh, in very large parts of India, uh, Direct cash transfers can certainly play a complementary role okay. uh, in the in, in, in the provision of social services to the poor. Okay. Uh, if we are talking about cash transfers substituting existing uh, uh, social services. security, policies, then it's a highly problematic uh, situation. But I would in no way be against uh, a cash transfer policy which would supplement or complement uh, 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 the existing uh, measures like existing social security measures like the PDS because any transfer, any additional transfer of money to the poor is always welcome. Yeah. I think on that note we can uh, conclude by saying that cash transfers have a role to play but only in specific uh, situations and that too has a, com that too a complementary role and it can't substitute uh, the existing welfare measures that are already in place. And yes, it's a highly contextual thing, yes. And also it is, uh, it is more an ideological uh, understanding that is driving this shift 
to a direct cash transfer program then really uh, 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 an expedient uh, measure right oh, oh yes very much very much uh, the primary uh, aim here is to uh, is to uh, cut expenditures and thus bring down fiscal deficit thank you ram thank you thank you so much